how to buy a laptop. What are the factors that you need to consider if you want to go ahead and buy a laptop for yourself? So today I want to talk to you about things like the operating system, the CPU, the GPU, the form factor, the storage, the ports, things that you need to consider before you go ahead and buy a laptop. And of course, one of the most important deciding factors is going to be the price. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the operating system. Do you want a Mac or do you want a PC laptop? And this is a very important question that you need to ask yourself because if you don't know what operating system you want, you might waste a lot of time. There are a ton of options out there, Mac computers and Windows machines. Of course, there are many more Windows options out there, but you need to know what you want. Now, if you haven't tried Mac operating systems, I suggest you first try it. Maybe see someone who has a Mac if you haven't used a Mac before. My point of view is I love Macs. I think they're way better than Windows still. Windows is catching up, but I think they're way better than Windows when it comes to productivity and content creation. Now, for some people, they might prefer Windows because maybe they have certain apps that work better on Windows. For me, I think Macs are better, but that is completely up to you. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is, do I want a Mac machine or do I want a Windows machine? If you haven't watched my video on Macs and how to use them, click on the link here and that's going to take you to that video. So you need to consider the type of software that you need to run. So maybe some software might not run on Macs. Now remember, Macs switch to different chips. They're called the M chips, the M1, M1 Max, and they bid farewell to Intel. And because of that, some of the programs may not run very well still. I think most of the programs are running very well now on the Macs, but maybe some of the programs are not. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of apps do I have? And from my personal experience, I think that Macs are friendly to navigate compared to Windows. I love the, the multi windows on Macs. I love how it works. I love how you can arrange desktops, how you can seamlessly switch from one desktop to another. That is something that I really like about Macs. Now remember, there is no perfect operating system. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses, and like I said, it completely boils down to your personal preference. The next factor that you need to think about is size. Now, laptops come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. They range between 11 inches all the way to 17 inches. For example, this is a 16 inch laptop, and this is a 15 inch laptop and you have 13 inch laptops, you even have 11 inch and 17 inch laptops. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of size am I looking for? I like a bigger size, but that's just for me. Some people might want smaller size laptops, maybe because they're lighter and more portable. So you need to ask yourself what size you want. And generally speaking, the larger the size, the more expensive the laptop. For example, this 15 inch razor blade is less expensive than the 17 inch razor blade with the same specs. So if you are looking for editing videos or playing games on your laptop, maybe a larger size laptop is better for you. I think 15 or 16 inch laptops are the sweet spot. 17 inch laptops are a bit big for me. They're a bit unwieldy, but that's just me. Maybe you're okay with 17 inch laptops. And speaking of size, now that we got size out of the way, we have to talk about the type of laptop that you want. Now there are different types of laptops. There are ultrabooks, there are gaming laptops, there are two-in-ones. Now gaming laptops like this razor blade right here, gaming laptops are very good and powerful laptops for multiple things. They can do gaming of course, that's what they're designed for, and they can do video editing, but gaming laptops are notorious for bad battery life. So if you are on the go and you want something very portable and something that's going to last, the gaming laptops may not be the best choice. But Macs on the other hand, they're very portable. They're still very powerful, but they're not for gaming. Macs are not for gaming. Although they can play certain games, but they're not designed for gaming. But they can last a very long time, especially with the new M chips, the M1 Max, for example, and the M1. They can last a very long time. But for gaming laptops, they're very powerful, they're very portable, but when it comes to battery life, they're notoriously bad. The next thing we're going to talk about is the CPU, which is the heart of the laptop. Previously, there were two main manufacturers, which is Intel and AMD, but things are changing now and Apple is back in the game. They've got their powerful, super efficient 
M chips. So you have the option to choose between CPUs, but I want to start first with Intel based chips. So Intel usually releases the i3, i5, i7, and Core i9 chips. And a lot of people get confused between these four different types of chips, but it's pretty simple. i3 chips are entry level chips, but from my experience, I've tried various i3 laptops before and they are notoriously bad. They're, they're just, I don't think they should even exist. If Take it from me, don't buy any laptop with an i3. Start with an i5 at least, because i3 laptops, they lag, they're very slow, they're just horrible. Don't start with i3, start with an i5. i5 laptops are considered mid-grade and they're found on most medium range laptops. They're good enough for most tasks, but they're not very powerful for demanding tasks like content creation or gaming. So if you wanna do something that is more demanding, you're better off getting a gaming laptop with an i7 or maybe a Mac. But Macs right now have the M chips and that is a completely different story. Now we're focusing on the Intel chips. i9 laptops, of course, are the most powerful laptops. They are designed to give you the best performance that is possible and that is comparable to a desktop as well. And they are usually for power users who need the best out of their laptops for photography, for gaming, for content creation, for videography, especially videography. So this, for example, this Mac right here is an i9 laptop. It's pretty good for most of my video editing needs. So if you have demanding tasks, then you're better off getting an i9 laptop. I think i7 laptops are the sweet spot for most people. They are powerful enough for most of the tasks, um, content creation, media, video editing, anything that you can throw at, multitasking. I think i7 laptops are a great option for most people and they're not that expensive by the way. So if you are to choose between an i5 and an i7 laptop, I say go for the i7 laptop, fork out the few extra hundred dirhams or, or dollars because that's gonna serve you well down the road. So that was for Intel-based chips, and now let's talk a little bit about Apple chips, the M chips. Apple introduced the M chips two years ago, and they are incredibly powerful and super efficient. You have the M1, the M1 Max, and the M1 Ultra. Now, if you wanna talk about AMD chips, AMD is interesting with their Ryzen chips. AMD chips were not that great before, but now things changed and AMD chips are competing with Intel chips and you start with the AMD 3 all the way to the Ryzen 9. The Ryzen 9 is the most powerful AMD chip that AMD has to offer and it competes with the i9, the Intel i9. The same thing applies here just like the Intel based processors. Start with Ryzen 5, skip the Ryzen 3. If I were you, I'd skip the Ryzen 3. All the way to the Ryzen 9 and if you are looking for the absolute best performance, then go for the Ryzen 9. If you want something that is good and an alternative for the i5, then go for the Ryzen 5. The sweet spot is the Ryzen 7. Now let's talk a little bit about the graphics cards. And of course, you know when it comes to graphics, the two most famous companies are Nvidia and AMD. Of course, Apple's got its own chips right now and they're very powerful indeed, but Let's focus a little bit on NVIDIA right now. Now, NVIDIA has four different types of chips that it releases every year. The first number in the series might change. For example, it was the 2080, now it's the 3080 or the 3080 Ti. So there are four different types. You've got, you start with the 3050, then the 3060, then the 3070, and you have the 3080. It's very simple. The 3050 is the weakest, although it can run most of the games, but it can run them at medium settings. 3060 graphics cards are powerful enough to run most of the games today, most of the demanding games, on medium to high settings. They're very powerful. Compared to the 2080, for example, last year's model, a 2080 is equivalent to a 3060 or 3070. I'd say between 3060 and 3070. So this is something to consider as well. Every year, NVIDIA introduces new graphics cards and usually the performance is as follows. So if you look at last year's performance, you go down once one or two series. So the 2080 is equivalent to a 3060 and a 3070, somewhere in between. And this year's 3080 would be equivalent to next year's 4060 or somewhere between the 4060 and the 4070. So it's always like this. The differences are minor, but it's somehow like this. 
So if you want the absolute best, look for the 80 in the end, so 3080 for example. But even better than the 3080 would be the 3080 Ti. Anyway, the prices for cards increased significantly and a 3060 is okay, but it may not run AAA titles in high settings. And if you want to do that, if you want to run games in high settings, you should get at least a 3070. I'd say get something between a 3070 or a 3080. Of course, desktop graphics cards are usually better than laptop graphics cards. For example, a 3080 on a desktop is more powerful than a 3080 on a laptop. So if you have the budget, go for a 3070. It's expensive anyway. Just add a little bit more money and get something better that can last you a long time. Now let's talk a little bit about AMD graphics cards. And AMD has the 5000 series and the 6000 series, and they are equivalent to NVIDIA graphics cards. AMD graphics cards are called Radeon. They are identified as Radeon RX something. So for example, the RX 5000 or the RX 6000 and they're the equivalent of NVIDIA chips. Let's say for the 5000 series, you've got the RX 5300, then the 5600, 5700. So similar to NVIDIA, they have their own variants and they have a more powerful variant, which is called the Extreme XT Extreme. And that means that it's powerful, like the most powerful. And then you have the top of the line, the 6850M XT, and that is the most powerful Radeon graphics cards. Now. Radeon graphics cards are very powerful, but NVIDIA graphics cards are still more powerful. However, Radeon graphics cards may be more cost effective. In today's age, I think Radeon graphics cards are comparable to NVIDIA. And the same thing applies. I mean, if you want something that can play games, AAA titles well, then go for, go for a mid-range Radeon card, like let's say a 6600, instead of going for the absolute entry base Radeon, which is the 6300. Go for a mid-range graphics card, at least you'll never know. So when it comes to graphics cards, I wanna just summarize this. It depends on your needs. If you wanna buy a laptop, you have to ask yourself, what am I going to do with this laptop? Am I going to be playing games? Am I going to be creating videos? Am I going to be doing something that is demanding? Or am I just going to use the laptop for simple light tasks like browsing the web, watching a video, writing some documents? What am I going to use the laptop for? But even if you're going to use your laptop for light tasks, I highly recommend that you get a laptop with at least mid-range specs. So a minimum of an i5 or an AMD 5, Ryzen 5. But when it comes to Macs, you're, you're just covered because Mac chips are powerful. Even the M1 chip is very powerful. So, and the next thing you need to know is, do I need a discrete graphics card? A discrete graphics card means that word that you see called discrete. That means a dedicated graphics card in the laptop. Some Intel-based laptops come with the Intel Iris chips. It's an integrated graphics card. It's an Intel based graphics card that comes with a laptop. Now these graphics cards are, I'm not gonna say very weak, but they're just entry level and they're not powerful enough to run a lot of the other tasks, although Intel is working on it. So you need to ask yourself, do I need a discrete graphics card? Do I need a dedicated graphics card from AMD or, or Nvidia? And if you do, aim for something that is like 3070, or at least a 3060. Don't go for a 3050. Even the 3050 Ti is not that great in my opinion. Go for a 3060 or a 3070. 3070 is the sweet spot. Or if you're looking at an AMD chip, then go for something like a 6600 at least. A 6700 would be great. I think that's the sweet spot for AMD chips. A lot of people get confused about how much RAM they need and it all boils down to your usage. What are your needs? Again, are you a light user? If you're a light user, Maybe even eight gigs of RAM might be enough for you. But in my opinion, in today's age, eight gigs may be enough, but I highly recommend you get at least 16. The sweet spot right now for most people would be, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, 16 gigs of RAM. If you're a content creator or a videographer or a photographer, then 32 gigs would be great for you. I think that would be just great. However, the higher you go, the more versatility you have and the easier it is to work with 4K or 8K videos or multiple tasks, multiple apps running together. So for casual gaming or video editing, you need at least 16 gigs of RAM. No, 
There's no question about it. You can't go with eight gigs if you want to do gaming or video editing. You can't. You just can't work with eight gigs. You need at least 16. But if you want to do something that is even more intensive, like heavy gaming or heavy video editing tasks, then you should get at least something like 32. Now this laptop here, I upgraded my RAM and I have 32 gigs. That's the beauty of Windows machines. Unfortunately, with Macs, you're stuck with the RAM that you get once you buy it. So that's why you gotta be careful. Before you buy a Mac, make sure that this is what you need because you can't upgrade the RAM on a Mac. The RAM is soldered onto the motherboard, so that's why you can't change the RAM. But with Windows laptops, you can upgrade. So this Razer Blade came with 16 gigs of RAM, and now I upgraded it to 32 gigs of RAM which is more than enough for most of my needs, for my gaming and video editing needs. So if you wanna look for an upgradable machine, then go for a Windows machine. Same thing when it comes to SSDs or hard drives, and that's my next point. When it comes to storage, that's what you need for storing all of your files, like documents, pictures, videos, and any other files. In the past, most of the computers had something called HDD, hard disk drive, and most of the computers now have something called SSD, solid state drive. Solid state drives or SSDs are much faster than HDDs. Actually, most of the HDD laptops are phased out unless you're looking at something very cheap. Most of the cheap laptops, like the super cheap laptops, come with HDD drives, but the majority of the laptops now have SSD drives or a combination of both HDD and SSD. I highly, highly recommend getting a laptop with an SSD. The problem with SSD laptops is that they are expensive. I mean, the higher the capacity, the more the price. And if you're looking for external hard drives, the same thing applies. For HDD hard drives, they're cheaper than SSD drives, but SSD drives are faster, they're more reliable, they're more shockproof. Remember, HDD drives are mechanical components because they've got a magnetic disk that keeps rotating. So if you drop it, for example, you are at risk of losing your data, but SSD drives are much more reliable, and of course, they're much faster. When it comes to Mac computers, they are blazingly fast. They have the highest SSD speeds in the market. Of course, Windows laptops also have fast SSDs, but I believe that Mac SSDs are much faster. If you wanna get top-notch performance when it comes to SSDs, Consider Max for content creation. And regarding capacity, some people are fooled into thinking that 256 gigs is enough these days. In my humble opinion, that is not true. 256 is absolutely not enough for most of today's needs. Even if you don't do video or, or photos or anything like that, it fills up your computer pretty fast. When I got my razor blade, I opted for the 512 SSD drive. Later on, I realized that that was a mistake because one game may take up more than 30 gigs of storage. And Windows itself needs a few gigs of, of storage for updates. Think about apps as well, like Microsoft Office needs, I don't know how many gigs of, of storage. You need more than 512, definitely more than 512 if you are a gamer. If you are a light user, then 512 might be the sweet spot for you. But if you're a gamer, do not get a 512. Absolutely don't get 256. That is, no, that's just no. Don't get 256. Get at least a one terabyte SSD for your gaming needs if you're a gamer. If you're a light user, go for 512 at least. I think that will be fine. But if you're doing anything related to video or photography or anything that needs more space, 512 was not enough as well. Unless, of course, you get an external hard drive like this. This is an external hard drive. It's five terabytes from Western Digital, easy store. Now, this is not an SSD. It's just an HDD, but because it's cheaper, you might get higher capacities. However, you're sacrificing reliability and speed. So when it comes to storage again, go at least for 512. If you're a gamer, go for one terabyte at least. If you're a content creator, you can even go above one terabyte. The sweet spot for content creators, in my opinion, if you got the money for it, if you have the dough, is two terabytes. Of course, if it's a Mac machine, uh, that's gonna cost you a lot. But if it's a Windows machine and it's upgradable, let's say you get a Razer Blade, you can upgrade that anytime you want. Anytime you have the money, you can upgrade. 
So think about all these factors before buying the laptop. Storage is a very important topic to consider. But if you still want to get something cheaper, you don't have the budget for more storage, you can solve the problem with external hard drives. But always remember that the internal storage is always going to be faster than working with external solid state drives. Even though SSDs are really fast these days, but something that is on your laptop is still faster and more efficient than something external. And finally, guys, let's talk a little bit about ports. Now, laptops come with all types of ports. If you, if you buy a Mac, you'll notice that most of the Macs come with USB-C ports, and that's just about it. But if you want a more healthy port selection, you can go for Windows laptops. Like this Razer Blade has USB 3 ports. It has USB-C. It also has HDMI. It depends on your needs. If you are a content creator, for example, you might want to get something with an SD card reader like this. This is an SD card reader. Uh, Macs, unfortunately, don't have SD card readers, but the new Macs do. So if you get the new Mac with the M chips, you might get that. However, Macs no longer have USB 3 ports. They only have USB-C. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of ports. Thunderbolt ports are super high bandwidth for super high speed transfers. HDMI stands for High Definition Media Interface, and now there's HDMI 2, so you can connect your projector or your display to your laptop. Thankfully, the new MacBook Pros have HDMI ports. They've got Thunderbolt 4, they've got HDMI, they've got SDXC, they've got MagSafe, and a headphone jack. But when it comes to Windows laptops, usually you get more variety. However, Macs now have been greatly improved. I mean, look at my older version of this Mac. This is the 16-inch Mac and the 2019 model and you only get USB-C ports but the new Macs have HDMI and they've got a card reader so you're good to go. If you get a gaming laptop like the Razer Blade for example you might get not all of the Razer Blades have the memory card reader so if you are a content creator or a photographer you might want something like this go for this. USB-C of course is really needed HDMI is great to have so you don't end up with these ridiculous dongles like this. This is a USB-A to USB-C adapter. I hate these things. So if you don't want this, you might, you might consider Windows laptops. However, Macs now have a better variety of ports, so you're covered. So that's about it, guys. I think I've just summarized most of the important points when it comes to buying a laptop. Consider the operating system, the size, the form factor. Ask yourself, why do I need this laptop? What am I going to use it for? Am I going to be doing gaming? Am I going to be doing content creation? Am I going to be doing heavy tasks? If yes, go for something that at least an i7 or a Ryzen 7 if you're going for AMD. If you want the best, go for an i9 or go for a Ryzen 9. And of course, you have to get a powerful graphics card if you want to do a lot of intensive tasks like video editing, for example. So I suggest you, you go for at least a mid-range graphics card, either the 3060 or the 3070. Don't go for something like the 3050 or maybe the 3050 is more powerful than the than the previous graphics cards, but don't go for the, the entry-level graphics cards. Go for the mid-range graphics cards if you're serious about your, your video editing work. Now, if you are not a power user, that's the right word, a power user, just go for, then you might go for any laptop that can cover most of your needs. For example, Macs right now are very powerful. They don't have graphics cards anymore like the AMD chips before. The graphics comes with the Mac itself. It comes with unified memory as well. So Macs are very efficient and the battery lasts a very long time. Now there are some excellent options as well for Windows if you want to go for Windows. Then the last thing you want to consider is the ports. Consider the ports, what, what kind of port selection you want. And don't forget about the screen as well. The size is important. There are different types of screens as well. I didn't even talk about the screens. You have 4K screens, you've got 1080p screens, you've got high refresh screens all the way to 360 hertz. Now, these kind of high refresh screens are usually used for gaming, so if you're not a gamer, you don't need a screen like that. However, I still recommend getting a laptop that is at least 120 because it feels really nice. It's smooth, it's buttery smooth, just like the new phones out there, all of the phones have 120. It's pretty smooth and it's, it's just, it feels good. The experience is completely different. 
If you're not doing any of that, then maybe a 60 hertz screen is fine for you, a traditional 60 hertz, but I don't recommend that. Get at least 120. Most of the laptops these days have at least 120 hertz, uh, the high end or the more powerful laptops out there. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you really like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to get more of these videos. I'll see you next time. Take care.